Hey everyone, what's up? It's Alex here from VG247.com and I'm back with another look at Anthem. Now, when I say another look, it's worth pointing out. If you missed it, we did have a video on EA and Bioware's Anthem, Bioware's new game, uh, last week. And now we're returning with a different look, but if you didn't see the look last week, last week we did a look at the first couple of hours of the game, where we played the first couple of hours and I had some impressions and some video footage of the early game in Anthem. What you have here is the very, very opposite. So whereas that was the first few hours, this is the equivalent of having an account that is, I don't know, I don't know how long Anthem's gonna be. It could be 30 hours in, it could be 60 or 70, but the point is, this is an account that is at the level cap. It's level 30, which is the max level for Anthem accounts at launch, and it's fully equipped with, you know, leveled up abilities and epic gear, and a, a colour scheme here, which is, I intended it to be sort of a garish, purpley pink, white and blue. But then after I made it, I realised it sort of looked a bit like Overwatch's D.Va. I don't know. Uh, and what I'm playing here is the Infiltrator uh, style class of Javelin. So basically, this is uh, light armour, a little bit more squishy than the other classes, but extremely fast moving and able to sort of uh, do some great melee attacks. So this is a, a, a class that's most at home, sort of dashing in up close, doing some heavy damage up close and personal, and then getting the hell out of dodge before you take too much damage and rinse and repeat. Whereas obviously you've got other classes that are like um, more like tanks. So you, there's some footage of me playing the Colossus, which is the tank style class. Uh, on the other video we posted, um, and I'll pop a link in the description, by the way. Um, and there's a more soldier-like class and a sort of mage-style class, but this is the infiltrator, anyway. Um, and yeah, so I wanted to give some impressions of the late-game content. Something I want to actually point out, and I mentioned this in the other video, but, you know, I think the obvious touchstone a lot of people will reach for with Anthem is, of course, Destiny. And th that absolutely works, that's absolutely correct, up to a point. Um, because it is a four-player loot shooter like Destiny, but it is quite different in many ways, and not least of all in the perspective, of course, because this is a third-person game. But the thing that I want to point out is, and I've said this before, Anthem bears quite a lot of similarity to sort of some of the work that was done in the Mass Effect multiplayer. Now, obviously, this comes from the team at Bioware who made this. It's led by the team who made the Mass Effect trilogy. So if you're not aware of what happened, when they wrapped up the trilogy and they finished the third Mass Effect game, that team decided to start working on a new IP and then they created a new Bioware team who went on to make Mass Effect Andromeda. Obviously Andromeda was what it was and wasn't as successful as EA would have hoped and was a bit problematic in places and all that, but this game still carried on with the original, with many of the original Mass Effect creators on board. And those creators obviously helped to conceptualize and design the Mass Effect multiplayer. And what's interesting to me is when you look at the abilities of this Interceptor class, it sort of does resemble one of those, I'm not sure which class it is in Mass Effect, but the one that has the biotic style zoom where you can target an enemy from afar, hit a button and you zoom in on that enemy. This character has that move. And this is just one of many ways in which this sort of resembles the Mass Effect multiplayer. It's also got the um, the combo system by where different elements and stuff like that interact with each other. So if you hit an enemy with one element and then hit them with another element, it'll cause a combo which can do more damage and so on and so forth. And a lot of that stuff carries over to this. And a lot of that stuff is really how this game differentiates, differentiates itself from a Destiny or whatever. And also how it sort of um, gives it a little bit more RPG cred, I guess. Because by where our, you know, Destiny comes from Bungie, who of course are a studio who made their bones making action games but Bioware still wants to they still want to be known as an RPG studio even if the story aspects of the RPG are perhaps a bit more muted in this game and so that brings us to the end game of Anthem which you're seeing here where stuff like those combo attacks is way more important and that's really cool and I think combat looks really slick and awesome um, and it's interesting I think many of my other impressions of Anthem remain and I think Despite playing this endgame content, the main question that remains for me, but also for Anthem in general, is really how challenging this content is going to be, how much of this content there is at launch, basically that age-old question with a services game, which is, okay, you're planning years of support, but how much video game is there on day one? And I think that's 
that is really the big area by which Anthem is going to live or die, at least early on. And what I played doesn't really tell me anything. Many of my uh, criticisms of Anthem before still sort of ring true here. So what I said in the video from last week where I just don't feel yet where the X factor is of this game that will give you a real reason to get excited. Like it looks great and it feels great, but at the same time, it's also kind of bland. It's really strange. Um, it's, 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 it's the weird, rare occasion of a game actually somehow feeling like less than the sum of its parts, which is something you don't really see very often. You know, very, very often you get games that are more than the sum of their parts, and you get games and they shouldn't really be as good as... They have no right being as good as they are, but somehow it all adds up in a really cool way. And for me, it's sort of the opposite at the minute, where you look at it and you're like, yeah, this is a AAA expensive, amazing thing. But then when push comes to shove, it just doesn't um, click as much as you would hope. Very strange. But I digress. The point is, I still had fun with the endgame content. I still really enjoyed it. Um, and I'm really keen to sort of see just how different these endgame characters can get uh, from each other. And, and, and how the game plays out with different party setups and stuff like that. But we're going to have to wait for launch to get a real idea of that. But that doesn't mean you can't watch some tasty in-game content right here, right now. So what's interesting here is, this is actually uh, the extended, more full version of a mission that they showed at E3, which sort of culminates in a boss that was a big part of the pre-release stuff for the game at E3 and stuff like that, uh, and giant spiders and all that stuff that you may have seen if you've been following this game since its inception. Anyway, my point is, I'm going to shut up in a minute and just let some of this video run and it won't be an uninterrupted run of this level because um, you know, some of it is a little bit slow where we're just picking up uh, orbs of light and, and returning them to a, to a specific position and stuff like that but also um, yeah, I don't want us to put you know a whole video out completely unedited which is fine. So there are going to be some cuts but basically it's a good opportunity for you guys to see uh, various stages of this mission. Uh, commentary free and just enjoy it and figure out uh, what you think of Anthem and what you think of the end game content. Do check out our other video if you want more general impressions on the game because I talk for longer and in more detail about what I think. There's also a written preview over on VG247.com you can give that a read and of course stick around on the channel if you like this sort of thing. We'll have a lot more from Anthem as we go into the, uh, go into the launch in the coming weeks but also if you take a look on the channel we've got all sorts of fun stuff uh, going on. We've got Crackdown and uh, Resident Evil and Kingdom Hearts and you know we're covering all of the video games basically so if you like the video games uh, stick around if you give us a like and a subscribe and all that stuff and ring the bell as the YouTubers say is that what I'm supposed to say I don't know if you ring the bell and all that stuff it actually genuinely does help us out because it gives us good numbers and lets us do more stuff like this and of course if video is not your thing head to vg247.com loads more there anyway i'm gonna shut up now enjoy the mission uh hopefully you're looking forward to anthem and uh let us know what you think in the comments till next time everyone see ya Almost done. Only a few fragments left.
Hey, door's still closed and there's notes everywhere. Give it a minute, it should work itself out. Should? Energy readings are stabilizing. It will be slowly. Just stay in the center, any interference will cause the energy to spike again.
be unprofessional to cut the link, right? Highly. Well then, next time I expect big ass bugs to be in the mission briefing. You have to show up for that to help.
Even the way it dies is unnerving. Uh, I wonder how many beers it'll take me to forget that. I'm gonna go with eight. One for each of the tyrant's legs. Oh, uh, no more scorpion talk, please. <laughs>